thanks to all of you for gathering here this morning, especially to our corporate partners in the world of engineering, MDU, Basin Electric, KLJ, and other interested parties. I want to thank the members of the news media for being here as well on this great morning. Sometimes I think about that great champion of higher education, John Henry Newman, who famously wrote The Idea of a University. He also wrote a book or a treatise called On the Rise and Progress of Universities. There's a small passage which haunts my memory from time to time in which he says, this is our hour. This is our hour, he wrote, the hour for great schemes, great efforts, great hopes, great beginnings. This is our hour. When I think of this question, this being our time, this being our hour, I remember the great planning process of Vision 2030, which took place over the course of the last couple of years. We convened hundreds of people from both inside and outside of the University of Mary community to have really generative conversations about the future of the university, about our opportunity to contribute, about our legacy and our place, not simply in the history, but in the future of this region and of the landscape of higher education in this country. All sorts of people came together to offer us their advice. People outside of the university, our partners, people who are privileged to serve, and also people who are part of our community here, members of the academy at the University of Mary, other interested parties. In the midst of those conversations, we ask questions about what we need to do in order to continue to serve, in order to fill the mission of the sisters who came to the prairies of Dakota Territory in 1878 to bring very impressive ministries of healing and of education in order to carry on the legacy of Mary College, which was founded in 1959 and became the University of Mary in 1986. What's the next step for us? What are the things which we have to have on our horizon in order for us to continue to flourish and grow with the region in which we live, in order to serve yet better the needs of the people of our region and beyond? In the midst of those conversations, we talked about capital projects, we talked about academic programs, and we talked about other efforts and initiatives which could deepen the impact and the ability for service of the University of Mary. I was interested in those conversations, and I have to say that they were very engaging. Lots of smart, dedicated, and invested people came together to talk about how much they love this institution and how much we can do in service to people. Now. In the midst of those conversations, I have to make a confession this morning, which seems backwards for a priest. <laughs> and my confession is this, the biggest surprise of all, the biggest surprise in all of those conversations was the deep momentum behind the concept of the idea of having a full program of engineering here at the University of Mary. When that happened, I was at first very hesitant because I thought to myself, you know, the University of Mary is many things. And we've offered, since our beginning, really vibrant programs in healthcare and in education. We've got a wonderful school of business. Our liberal arts at the University of Mary are excellent and always growing. But engineering seemed to me just a stretch. And I thought, <laughs> ought we to do it? Really ought we to do it? That question, in the midst of the conversation, was answered in a resounding way by the people who were here talking about what we should be doing, but also it was borne out by the circumstances in which we find ourselves at this moment in time. In North Dakota, there is such a need for engineers. Engineers who are not simply well-trained technically, but who are culturally prepared for the workplace, who are imbued with certain values that allow them to carry on in their professional lives deep efforts of service putting their lives and their professional careers and their skills at the service of their companies and at the service of progress in North Dakota. That need was something which we felt we could offer or meet. We felt like as a, as a Benedictine place of higher learning, as a Christian Catholic Benedictine university, we had the capacity to offer not simply the technical skills, but also the personal and human formation necessary to grant and to give students the opportunity to grow as engineers and as human beings. And that was very, very moving to me. And then we looked at the other statistics. We looked not just at the need, but the demand among prospective students. And when we opened that book, I couldn't put it down. 
It was an amazing thing to see how much interest is expressed from year to year among families and prospective students in the possibility of studying engineering. This past year, we received almost 700 inquiries from students who wanted to come to the University of Mary for an engineering program. And we thought to ourselves, this is a need which needs to be addressed. This is an opportunity which can't be missed. I'm so very proud of the people at the University of Mary, particularly Dr. Pilling and Dr. Fladeland, who have spearheaded this effort to pull together the beginnings of the launch of an enormous initiative at the university, the foundation of a program in engineering. This is a new day, and this is a great hour at the University of Mary. I have one more to confession to make before I turn it over to smarter people. I'm tired. I'm tired not because as I look at this effort, I realize we've got a lot to do. No, that energizes me. I'm tired because this morning I got up early and drove all around town looking for a pocket protector <laughs> that I could put a bunch of little different colored pens in. But then I thought, if we're going to be a major source of engineering education in this region, it doesn't do any good for the president of the university to play into old stereotypes. And so I thought the better of it. But tired as I am, I'm excited. I hope you're excited too. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to announce formally that the University of Mary is launching this coming academic year a program in engineering. Thank you. Thank you, Monsignor Shea. Let me put some meat on those bones because obviously the, de the devil is always in the detail and we don't like devils around here, so let me give you some detail. <laughs> the uh, program, all, the University of Mary already has engineering science as a major and we have that program in conjunction with a cooperative agreement um, with University of Minnesota. We've had it for about seven or eight years and the students are able to take three years at the University of Mary, transfer to University of Minnesota in Minneapolis, St. Paul, complete their engineering program, and then we grant them a degree in engineering science. University of Minnesota grants them a degree in engineering in the major of their choice. The issue certainly is still open to students, and we have that, that a memorandum of understanding, and that continues. But what that has not allowed is for our students to stay in Bismarck. And one of, the, one of the issues that our advisory committee has told us and one of the things that we are trying to deal with is helping Western North Dakota. We're trying to make sure that our growing economy, our workforce in Western North Dakota has the talent that it needs to continue in this, pro in this pro trajectory that we're seeing. And we do know that when students do their internships and their school east, it is a very rare thing that they turn their eyes west when they graduate. A lot of times they um, end up going to Minneapolis, St. Paul and points even further east for their profession. So we knew that it was important that we keep the students here. To begin our engineering program, we are so excited to partner with the University of North Dakota. Uh, you, Terry and I and Dr. Fleischacker, our Dean of Arts and Sciences, went to visit the Dean at UND and they were very gracious in extending their program and a memorandum of understanding to the University of Mary so that we will be able to partner and students will be able to stay at the University of Mary all four years while they complete their degree. As we are phasing in our own engineering courses, they are able to take courses from UND for the most part online and continue their education here in Bismarck, continue their internships with your companies, to continue working with your companies throughout their education in partnership so we have a much better track record of keeping them here when they graduate. Their laboratory experience as we are building up to build our own labs, which you know to be an expensive proposition, as we're doing our fundraising to build our engineering labs, UND will allow us and will invite us to use their labs in the summers as they're getting this uh, engineering degree. It is in conjunction and it is a dual degree at this point. So the students that come to Mary will be getting a degree from University of Mary in engineering science and a degree in engineering from, U from the University of North Dakota while we continue this partnership and as we build our engineering 
uh, program here locally at our campus. So these are exciting days. It is the first step in our um, advisory committee, our advisory, our partners said this is exactly what needs to be done because remember engineering is an accredited profession and both UND and University of Minnesota are accredited programs. So our students will be graduating from accredited programs immediately and then as we're building our programs uh, over the next three, four years, we'll be going forward for our accreditation. So the seamless transition of those programs from collaboration to our home at the University of Mary with its own accredited engineering program will not be interrupting our students' education at all. They will be here in Bismarck getting their education to serve you. We're very excited. Our curriculum then is in place. All of our core curriculum, our mathematics, our chemistries, our computer science courses, all of those are in place. The courses that are being created right now are the engineering courses in those disciplines uh, that the students are choosing. And it's going to be wonderful for us because we're going to be able to see what the demand is. Right now you know from your press release that we're offering civil, chemical, mechanical, electrical, and petroleum engineering through our MOU with UND. At University of Minnesota, there's about 13. But we're going to be able to see very quickly in those students, and I think we've got almost 500 uh, expressing interest for next fall already, what is the major that they're selecting? And that can be our focus as we're building our programs here at Mary. These are exciting times. I would echo what Monsignor said about where we're positioning ourselves in our strategic plan. The strategic plan, as you all recall, was called 2030. And we were challenged to say, what is North Dakota going to look like in 2030? We need to be able to project how the University of Mary will grow and how we will expand and define ourselves to meet those needs. These are very different times in North Dakota and in Western North Dakota and in Bismarck and Mandan. And we need to stretch and accept those challenges. Engineering is going to be able to do that for us in a very real way and we're terribly excited. At this time I'm going to welcome to the podium Dr. Terry Pilling who's got a perspective certainly as an engineer and as a faculty to talk about this program at Mary. Terry? Good morning, everyone. Um, I guess the only thing I can add to what Monsignor and uh, Diane have already said is that we will be, as we go into the future, adding more and more engineering courses to the University of Mary so that eventually we'll be able to offer the entire degree with Abbott accreditation here at the University of Mary. Um, also, we have a number of students that are already taking engineering with the program that we have with the University of Minnesota. Those students are now able, with the new agreement with the University of North Dakota, to stay at the University of Mary for the rest of their degree and get their degree here. Uh, that will require several summers uh, at the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks with intensive weeks of laboratory studies um, until we get our laboratories up and running, uh, hopefully in the near future. Um, we're also going to be working very closely with North Dakota engineering firms and companies and utilities uh, so that we can get our students internships at these companies and maybe start their career path at these same companies. Um, and also so that we can learn from them what sort of modern techniques and technology we need to be teaching our students so that they are at the forefront of the workplace when they get to those firms. Um, we want to be at the top and uh, we want our students to be, uh, to be sought after as uh, excellent professional engineers. Um, as was mentioned by Monsignor Shea, we also give, I think, we have the advantage of giving our students a broad-based liberal uh, arts foundation and humanities foundation that maybe isn't uh, emphasized to quite the extent in other universities. And I think that helps in the sense that it gives them a diversity of knowledge and with that diversity of knowledge, of course, comes a diversity of interests. And this ensures that these engineers, although they will, all, they will be professionals uh, in their companies and valued members of their companies. They will also be valued members of their communities and contributing members of their communities and social circles. Um, and I think that's a very important thing that we offer at the University of Mary and will entice many students to choose us over uh, alternatives. Um, 
I guess the last thing I can say is that we've already begun adding courses. We've got new courses being offered next semester. And uh, sub-disciplines uh, of engineering, right now we're uh, concentrating on civil, chemical, mechanical, and uh, electrical. And uh, other, other branches will be offered according to what uh, we hear from the firms and companies around the state and what the demand is from the students. And so my goal is to continue this process tirelessly into the future. Thank you. <laughs>